What's up guys, your Jim Say here. Today we're back again, and in this video we're gonna be playing some Jin Zhao in the jungle. So I think Jin Zhao is overall one of the best junglers, one of the most well-rounded ones, and the reason for that is because he could do pretty much anything. His early game, very, very strong. Team fight potential, also very good. You provide good tank and utility for your team. But to start off this match, I'm just trying to get some wards up around and then going to be starting off with my red buff. And with Jin Zhao, you could do a couple of different jungle rotations. You don't necessarily have to have a set one. So what you could do is you could take pretty much take your entire red side and then work over to blue side and then just farm to level five and look for a gank. But in other matches like this, where you see good gank potentials in the lanes, I would definitely just try and do one side jungle clear and then look for a gank. So looking at this bottom lane over here, for instance, the Teemo versus uh, Caitlyn, you can already tell they're trading a lot. They're both already half health. They're almost dead at the very start. So I know there's probably going to be very gankable lanes in this Pantheon trying to get a sneaky one in, but I'm able to get the smite in. And now, I know what Pantheon's jungle rotation is. That's a big mistake from him. It's pretty much just showing me what a jungle rotation is. So I know that he just took his blue side, and he's just farming that up, and then he's probably going to head towards bot side scuttle. So I know he's going to be at that scuttle, and we can see the little scanning thing over there. So he's still over there. But I see this Caitlyn over here. I'm trying to farm this up so I can look for a gank. And when I go for this gank, a very key thing that I'm trying to keep in mind is that Caitlyn probably still has flash up. So notice how I don't engage with my third ability right away. I just look in for an auto attack and when I can kill him, then I can. But um, essentially what I was doing was I was holding my third ability in case Caitlyn flashed away, then I could essentially just follow up with my third ability. Because if I'd engaged with my third ability and then they flash away, I have no way of getting back onto him. So... Gap closing, very, very key on Jin Zhao. And if you watch my other Jin Zhao videos, I have very good examples of that. And I have a decent amount of Jin Zhao gameplay on my channel for sure. Jin Zhao is definitely one of my favorite champs. Just the early game is so, so strong. And then mid game and team fighting too, you can provide so much tank for your team. And one thing that I like about Jin Zhao that like a lot of people don't realize is even if you fall behind like a little bit in the early game, it's still very easy to come back with Jin Zhao. One of the main like parts about becoming a very good Jin Zhao player is targeting right if you focus on trying to kill tanks and stuff you're not going to do very much to them just because they're super tanky and stuff but with Jin Zhao, you have so much mobility with your third ability plus your ultimate just does great aoe damage and helps protect you so i mean if you can engage onto the carries onto the squishies then that's pretty much just how you carry with Jin Zhao is target focusing if you focus the wrong targets with Jin Zhao, and notice something very key here. I know Pantheon's going to be on his red side because he just cleared his blue side jungle. So I'm keeping an eye out for Pantheon. I'm assuming he's looking for a gank. So I thought he was on his red. He did just take, he took his, um, what are they called? He just took his Raptors and now he's looking for the gank. But notice something very key here. I'm level five. They're all level four. So I'm trying to look to push this fight and we're able to pick up one kill. And now I'm trying to get onto the Pantheon over here. We are able to pick all three of them up, and now the enemy, Zo Zoe, I don't know. This was a match from a little bit ago when this champ just came out, actually. Um, actually, in this match, I didn't know what, um, in this match, I don't know what Zoe's, her, um, Zeri's abilities do. I looked at him after this match, I remember, because <laughs> I'll, I'll give you all a bit of a foreshadowing, but, um, I did get put to sleep a couple times by the Zoe, and I was very very confused as to what this champ did and that crowd control as you can see you have to be very very cautious of crowd control especially if you're playing a frontline tank oh it looks like that caitlin's not gonna get away but now that pantheon he ults down looks like he's trying to get onto that teemo but thankfully teemo's able to get away and now i know what pantheon's doing he's gonna go back to his blue side jungle and farm that up so i'm able to get onto him over here i know he already burned ult i don't even have to waste my own ult on that and now I'm keeping an eye. I didn't realize that they, like, flash back like that. Like, their ultimate just lets them blink forward and then back, essentially. But, um... Yep, I know that his blue buff is up and everything, and now I'm looking to take this. And I know his blue buff is the same cooldown, and I'm pretty sure he's coming back here, but, um... I know his blue buff is the same cooldown as my red buff, because we both started, like, with those buffs. So now, I'm taking this over here, and I see Pantheon over here. I think I can get this kill, but I make a very big mistake here in that I did not watch my bottom lane, so I noticed that Teemo just left, and I get put to sleep, and I'm, <laughs> I was confused about what that was. I did not know that um, that ability that puts you to sleep, it extends over terrain and everything. But yeah, you can see, I'm, I'm like, what is this? What is this? 
magic that's happening. So I'm I'm getting the read up on what it does, and then really that's the main like obnoxious part that I noticed about that champ is just the drowsy and then getting put to sleep. It can catch you out if you miss position at all. You can get crowd controlled so badly by that. Because if you get like put to sleep by that and then stunned up by Pantheon, that is unfortunately not a good look for you. Especially if you engage and then you get like crowd controlled like that. That's very unfortunate. But I'm looking to just take this Herald over here. I know I can win pretty much most skirmishes just because I'm probably stronger in the early game. So I'm looking to take this over here. I know that they aren't taking the dragon because like look at our dual lane. Our dual lane has such big priority. So I know that we would get good warding on them if they were taking the dragon. But they come over here and <laughs> I get put to sleep again. Try to ult out. Unfortunately, our Teemo is gone again, and I was trying to third ability onto the Golem, or not onto, onto the Krugs, and then I was trying to third ability away. But at least our dual lane was able to get a kill there. That's pretty good. But, yep, yeah, it's just going to take a while for Teemo and everything. Looking at our lanes, the lanes are not looking too good at all. Dual lane's doing pretty well, but other than that, mid and bot side, looking a little bit behind, but now... See Pantheon up towards the dragon, and I'm waiting for my ultimate to get back off cooldown. I know once I have my ult, when you get your ultimate on Jinja for the first time, it is such a strong ability in the early game. Like, people don't realize how, like, broken of an ability is. Like, you can completely just dodge any damage from, like, ranged characters or ranged champs. And now, I see that that tower is pretty low, so I just herald and take that. I realize there's really no contesting that, like, I can't really walk in over there. Our entire team just reset, so... I decided to just take that first turret instead. And now as my team comes back, I see they got the they got all the crowd control. They got the Nautilus too, so trying to stay away from the Nautilus. I unfortunately have to burn ult, but let's see if we can maybe get that Pantheon. And this is a huge mis misfortune ult. That was completely just carry that. So now trying to get onto this Nautilus. I tried to get onto this Zeri here and able to pick him up, able to pick him both up. And now we should be able to clean up this dragon. So that was really good from us to like kite back. And that was such a good angle for Misfortune ult because they're in that very, very tight spot. People like are not aware of like AoE ultimates. That's why a lot of AoE champs, I don't know what this team was doing, but um, that's why a lot of people struggle against AoE champs just because they don't really recognize how to play against AoE champs. That's why champs like Katarina, um, what's the ADC's name? Um, sorry, I'm blanking right now. The ADC that also has like the Katarina like ult. Um, I'm trying to chase down this Caitlyn over here. Unfortunately, the Caitlyn traps are pretty toxic and trying to catch up. Unfortunately, not able to, but um, just going to push this wave out. And as I was saying though, <laughs> against AoE champs, if you're in a place like a dragon pit or in like one of these alleyways, like one of these choke points right around here inside the jungle, that's where AoE champs like thrive like if you get hit by for instance like a katarine ult or a jin zhao ultimate or like a wukong ultimate in one of these points that's how you lose team fights if you don't spread out right then that can be completely game changing for a team fight and you kind of saw back there they all chased into that one choke point and the misfortune was able to just hit ults once and they all just got deleted but now just pushing out these waves over here farming up i see that they're pushing that top side so i'm trying to make it over there Looks like that Pike's actually got it. Looks like that Pike's popping off right now. They might go down here to the Zeri. Oh, no, they're actually able to pick up the Zeri. So now I start to head back towards... I think they're going to rotate towards topside to try and save the turret. So I was trying to catch them out on the rotate if they do go towards topside. But looks like they were just looking to push mid lane. So now I'm trying to chase them down. I'm able to get a good flash. The, um, Zoe is able to flash away. But still able to track down the tr Caitlyn at least. And... Overall, that's pretty good. That Pantheon tries to ult in. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's not able to find me. Or, well, fortunate for me, unfortunate for him, I guess. But now, getting in more items. As for the build for Jin Zhao, though, I usually like to go Black Cleaver into Divine Sunder and then just tank after that. I know some people like Lethality on Jin Zhao, but personally, I think it just depends on your playstyle, how you like to play Jin Zhao. And I definitely play Jin Zhao very frontline like and i play very very bruiser style and i just like the tank personally for my team because a lot of times teams don't pick tank especially if you're just solo queuing so a lot of times a jungler will have to fill up that role of playing a tank so 
as you can see in this case, in this match, I'm the only tank on the team. So that can be very rough if you build like lethality and you don't have much tank or anything and you build all damage. So now, unfortunately, I'm not able to get that scuttle. Just trying to grab it and now... I can't really engage just because they're all back there. Like, it's pretty obvious. We don't have half our team here, so... You gotta watch out because if you get crowd controlled against like a Nautilus or Pantheon once and then with that Zoe too, you're just gonna get completely deleted essentially. So now I'm just waiting for our teammates to get back. I'm waiting for Pike. Pike is still in the back in the base. So now I don't know. They stepped up very, very far. I try and at least like frontline and create some separation. And you can see, look at how much that ult is doing for me. Look at how much value I got from that. That was the only reason why like our team was essentially able to live and why i was able to live is because that ult's just such a good disengage tool too such a good both engage and disengage but unfortunately our team getting caught out a bit i have to reset over there because i pretty much just burned most of my combo trying to save the team but they're pretty low over here thankfully lucian's able to pick off a kill over there and now i'm on the way back i almost have my ultimate back up in a couple seconds so that's what i'm waiting for i'm waiting for my ultimate Able to get the engage in over there. And I just get completely chunked down halfway. Like, you can see they just... Completely chunked me down. So now, I know that Pantheon didn't see me. So I'm trying to see if maybe he, like, went to his red buff or something. You know, trying to get a fast one in there. But I think he might... Oh, he came back. Let's see. Is he going to come for the steal? Ah, oh, he was smart. He didn't come back for it. Dang. Because I have my ultimate up back off cooldown. I probably could have gotten that kill over there if he would have re-engaged. So now I'm just trying to get this first tier top turret over here. Trying to push in some waves. And that's another nice thing about Xin Zhao is you're actually pretty decent at pushing turrets too. Like, you do a decent amount of damage to, uh, to um, turrets. Like, you can see my autos, like my empowered autos are doing like 300 damage per auto attack. And now I see Zeri over here. I don't really know where the rest of the team is. I'm checking items to see like how much gold people have, what items people have. Because that's a mistake a lot of people make. And there's a Pantheon. And unfortunately for him, he messes up his stun. And I'm able to pick up the Zeri over there. And now chasing down this Pantheon. The rest of them are trying to defend mid. And I'm able to get a good flash combo and able to pick them both up there. And that's just the strength of Jin Zhao is you're just so, so strong in small skirmishes. And you just dish out so much damage. And now can keep on pushing down this turret over here. Unfortunately, our team was dying in mid, so... <laughs> trying to... I see that the enemies are missing, so I just dip out. I don't really want to die and give up a bounty or anything, so... I dip out over here. Maybe I could have stayed, but all the enemies are missing, so I was like, I'd rather just reset and stay for drag and everything. But I go ahead and buy GA. I realize at this point, like, team fights are pretty big. There aren't, like, too many small skirmishes anymore, so... Go ahead and buy GA for, like... And GA is also very nice against, like, high crowd control, like, burst teams like this. Because, for instance, if I don't have GA and they just, like, chain crowd control me, I'm gonna die. But at least with the GA, I'll at least have, like, a second chance. So now, I see over here and looking for a good engage onto the back line. Able to get a good engage. And now, I'm chasing down both of these people over here. They're both super low. I'm able to get one. And it looks like my GA is gonna get popped, but... I was at least able to take off, take on two of them by myself, and the Pike's able to clean up everybody else, it looks like, so. That was overall a pretty good, pretty good angle. And see what I mean by, like, if you engage and then have your ultimate, like, you can bully pretty much any single squishy. It's so hard for them to get away from you because you have such good mobility, and also your burst damage is just so, so strong. And a lot of people underestimate it, but the damage from your second ability is absolutely insane. A big mistake that I see a lot of people make on Jin Zhao is that they use their second ability for the extended range for their third ability. So like if you look at that, if you go back and you look at that engage over there, notice how what I did was I essentially, I third ability onto him first and then use my second ability. That way you get all the damage from like, you get the sweep and like the like spear part of your second ability. Essentially just all of it hits. So able to pick up a kill over there. And now I don't know why we're staying. I don't have GA. I have no mana. I'm just trying to get out of here. I can't go back in or else I'm just going to die. So I go ahead and just dip out. Go back to the berries. I saw there's some up. So grab these. And now I'm looking. Maybe I can get a nice little pick off or something. But <laughs> choose to play it a little bit safe. Now I have a decent amount of health. I see them over. I see the Caitlyn over here. I'm trying to see if I can get. In oh, I see the Caitlyn flash in. And I actually 
kind of screw up that engage. I definitely should engage onto Ka Caitlyn. That was a big mistake on my part. I should have noticed that the Caitlyn just used all their stuff, so that would have been a good engage onto Caitlyn. I think I accidentally just messed up <laughs> who I used my ability on. But, um, as I was saying, if you can get in all the damage from your second ability, like, you saw how much I chunked down that Pantheon over there, and if that was a Squishy, too, that would have took off, like, half of their health. Because the thing is, is that the range from your, like, extended third ability really isn't too much longer than just the normal third ability. So in a lot of cases, you can actually just engage with your, like, normal third ability without having to get in the extended range. And then you can use that second ability to get, like, the maximum damage output out. And again, if you watch my other Jinjiao videos, like, you'll see that in there, too. Like, I do this in pretty much every Jinjiao, like, match. And you'll probably see it more in this match, too, where I try and engage with my third ability and then use my second ability. Now, of course, as I was saying, if you do need the extended range, then of course, like, do use your second ability to get extended range from your third ability, but... Again, like, the damage from your second ability, people just underestimate it a lot. So now... I'm just looking to push in these waves over here. Our team's a little bit split. Setting up some warding. We need Pike with us. Pike is pushing topside, so can't really look for a good fight here. I'm kind of just need to back off. We can see the pikes trying to reset too, so. Trying to avoid this Caitlyn poke. This Caitlyn poke is so dirty. But our team just gets poked down all the way. And now Pike's on the way, but we're all super low. Like, we definitely just, we definitely just took an L over here. We definitely just need a reset. And this pike goes in. He gets a really good engage, actually. I get a huge ult in, and now I'm trying to get out of there. I get put to sleep, and now I unfortunately go down. And overall, for, like, how that started off, like, that fight turned out pretty, like, that fight turned out pretty alright. Let's see. Yeah, we were able to pick up four of them. Two of us went down. <laughs> but both of these people left have, like, one HP. But, um, yeah, overall, that was, like, just, that's what I mean by, like, Zhen Zhao, one of the best well-rounded junglers. You have good early game, you could do that team fight and everything, and they're all trying to flush, flash out. Oh my gosh, I can't say even flash. But, um, yep, yeah, so now, let's see what's going to happen here. Oh, the Teemo versus the Zoe. Who's going to win? Uh, Teemo? Did he get the red buff? He got the red buff. There we go. At least we got something out of it, I guess. <laughs> we got a red buff. But then for the enchant, um, you can go a couple, you can go, like, a lot of things on Jin Zhao. So, um, in this case, I think I go plated steel caps just because, I think just... Pantheon, Caitlyn, especially the Caitlyn. The Caitlyn has been definitely chunking everybody this match. But, um, once you, like, or you can go to Nasty Boots, you can go pretty much whatever. But, um, as for the enchant, you can go a couple things. Stone Plate's a pretty good one if you're playing, like, a lot of frontline. Another good one is I like getting Locket a lot of times. If my teammates are struggling to stay alive, I'll get them Locket to try and help them keep them alive. Because if you can time a good Locket, you can negate so much damage. But, um... Yeah, over here, I'm being careful. I'm waiting for teammates to get nearby. I see that they're starting this up, and I'm pretty sure we can stop them from doing this. They're both, they're all pretty low. We see this Pantheon over here trying to catch him out. Oh, Pike, unfortunately. I, I thought I got the third ability on. That's why I pressed ult, but unfortunately. A little bit, and now this is just such a weird case. Like, there's a fight going on over here, but then there's the two people behind us. Like, if you look on the mini map, there's also people behind us. So now... I'm able to go out onto Zoe, and, like, look at that damage. It's just so broken. And Pike's able to get a huge double kill. Taking all my kills, I see Pike. Got 15 assists. And now, as I was saying, there's the two people behind us. The Caitlyn's behind us. So now, trying to reset. I was debating. I was like, which way do I go? Do I try and save, like, my teammates back there, or do I join the Pike? But I guess I made the right decision, sticking with the Pike. Thankfully, we were able to get, get the Caitlyn. That's pretty good for Misfortune. But... Yeah, pretty much just farming back up. I have my GA back off cooldown. Oh, I was talking about enchants. You can go stone play. You can go lock it if your teammates are struggling. And in this case, I was like, my teammates just need some sustain. They have no health. We're all super squishy. Stone play, or lock it would definitely help them. Um, in other cases, of course, you can go stasis if you think stasis would help you out. But um, stasis wouldn't have been bad here. Stasis probably would have been pretty good. That way you can like get out of like chain crowd controls like if you know you're getting like drowsy by zoe then you could just stasis and you won't get like super crowd controlled 
Or you can go Quicksilver Enchant. I mean, you can go pretty much anything, too. You can even go Protobelt if you're feeling, like, a bit fancy on Jinjiao, but... Engage. You, you should probably know how to use Protobelt if you get Protobelt. But now, Dragon Spawning, and I kind of want to rush this over here. We have good positioning and everything, and this was pretty good angle to just go ahead and rush this down, but... I don't know, our team's just running through mid. They really can't be doing that without me, because if Pantheon gets one stun onto him, then they're just gonna get followed up by, like, look at that Nautilus just running him down, like... They shouldn't be wandering around in lanes without me. That's a mistake a lot of people make, is, like... You just have to realize when you need a frontline with you and when you, like, don't, so... I'm able to pick up the Elder, I guess, but... Unfortunately, two of our teammates die in the process. So now, I'm like, <laughs> just leave the scuttle. Leave the scuttle, let's not die for that. Because at this point now, I just want to keep the Elder buff on me, because two of our teammates already lost it, so... We can have three people with Elder buff, that's not too bad. But now, I see this Caitlyn over here. These traps are so obnoxious to deal with. I'm trying to get onto him. I'm able to get a good ult in, that Nick does negate a lot of damage, but look at that team where he just got absolutely deleted. I'm able to pick up the Caitlyn at least, now I look for a nice little re-engage. Get put to sleep. I have flash out so that they don't pop my GA. And now... I'm a, I'm like, I'm debating, do I go back in? Do I go back out? Do I save my GA? I have GA, so I can go in and I might not die, but... I realize, you know, our teammates, they just chase too far. Unfortunately, they got caught out in mid over there. If they would have stayed alive with the buff, that would have been pretty good, but... These minions pushing the top side of the map, and... Now... Trying to just take this red buff. Trying to keep an eye on Baron, making sure they don't accidentally sneak a make sure they don't sneak a fast one in there and now i have full build and everything i don't really need any more gold and at this point in the match um whenever i get my ga popped inside of like a team fight or something the cooldown's pretty long for ga so after i like use the pass or like the passive from or no the active from ga like where it revives you i usually just sell ga and buy myself another defensive item or like dead stance or something just because ga really isn't that useful unless you have the actual like revive so, now, I don't know why the pike's split pushing. I'm in a very bad spot. They're all here, and I'm just trying to dish out as much damage as I can at this point before I go down. Get my GA popped, but, like, we're at least able to chunk them down, like, a decent amount. Like, look, they're all super low. If we had pike here, we could have easily just destroyed this fight. But actually, our teammates are doing a good job of cleaning it up, so... I guess I could be the meat shield for this time. I guess I'll take one for the team. But Pike's just pushing this top side over here, and that Zeri is starting to pop off. Their damage really starting to ramp up. And now, they get two kills. Looks like they might get three kills. Oh, can this Pike save him? Nice, that Pike ult. Just save Misfortune. But, yeah, Pike was just pushing top side. If we had him with us, I think we definitely could have just steamrolled that fight. But that's all right. Oh, shoot, he's just going in deep. This Pike's going crazy this match. Dang. It is a little bit obnoxious playing with Pikes because they do for real do be stealing all your kills. I got 18 assists in this match. It's unfortunate. But it's okay. That's the thing about Xin Zhao is like, you don't even need a lot of gold to make Xin Zhao work. Like, certain champs like Eve or like high like priority like assassins like Kazakhs, like, you need gold on them to like actually be like somewhat relevant in the match. But with, like, a champ like Jin Zhao, you really, like, as long as you, like, stay about even, like, you can still do so much. So now, I realize I shouldn't chase a, ch chase a Caitlyn too far deep, so... I was just trying to get the blue buff over there. I probably could have just smited that, but... Pushing out waves and everything. And now... Trying to see if we can get a nice little catch out. We see the Nautilus is topside, so... Now would be a pretty good chance, because they are lacking on frontline for sure. Really, we just have to get good crowd control on somebody. So now, we're able to catch out the Pantheon over there. That's really good that we got warding. I'm able to negate a lot of damage with my ultimate there. I'm able to flash out too, and now... Just kiting back with my teammates. We're able to pick up another kill, so now... Keep an eye over there. I see the berries over here, and I'm like, I need these berries. And now, I'm able to just engage... Oh no, I'm just on the run, actually. I'm not even engaging. Look at that damage from that Zeri in the late game. Absolutely crazy. Mm -mm. <laughs> I, I was trying to engage, and then I saw that burst. I got bursted by, like, one auto thing, and then I was like, nope, actually, I'm out. But our teammates were able to pick that 
clean that up. And overall, that was a pretty good match. And I think this match was a pretty good example of like how to frontline when you're the only frontline in your team. And just in general, pretty good Jin Zhao match. But I hope you all enjoyed. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe. Comment down below. And that's going to be it. Also, comment down below what kind of champs you want to see. Stuff like that. As I always do like to listen to what other people have to say. But I'll see you all in the next video.